Okay, hello. Thank you for, very much for coming to our session today. And Narisha and I, we are going to be sharing with you our experiences in our companies. Uh, let me, first of all, introduce myself. My name is Tuba, and I'm the HR director of Hürriyet, which is the leading newspaper in Turkey. And today I will be talking to you about the HR aspect of the digital transformation we have carried out in Hürriyet so far, and we are still actually continuing that transformation. But before proceeding to the details, let me of course introduce you Hürriyet. Hürriyet is the leading newspaper of my country. It's a 67 years old newspaper, and it is such a strong newspaper brand that when you ask someone in the street what Hürriyet is, which means freedom in Turkish, people won't be thinking of the, co of the meaning of that word, but they will immediately remember Hürriyet as a newspaper brand. So, such a strong brand. Uh, but actually, we don't do journalism only anymore. For the last 20 years, we also have activities in digital world. What do we have? We have a business segment that we prefer to call content and community, where we have platforms for bloggers, platform for video, small websites for women, for finance, etc. And we also have an e-commerce business where we have classifieds on job search, on real estate uh, acquisition, etc. Back in 2012, actually this is when I joined Hürriyet as HR director, uh, our company started to uh, started a digital transformation project that we called Kafka back then. Of course, we were inspired by Kafka, uh, but of course, unlike uh, Gregor Samsa, we don't want to become an insect, but instead we wanted to be a very strong digital company. Actually, digital transformation is not a nice to have for our business. As everywhere else in the world, newspapers are less and less read, the circulations are going down, and print business EBITDAs are going down every single year. So digital transformation for a newspaper, for a journalism business, is a must for survival. So this is how we started. And it was really a very difficult journey ahead. There were lots of different aspects, but of course, today I will be focusing on the challenges we experienced at HR. First challenge we had was our corporate culture and brand image. I just uh, shared with you that Hürriyet is a very strong newspaper brand in Turkey. This is great but it's also a very big disadvantage because it's a newspaper brand. We needed to attract new talent as HR department. We needed to attract digitally uh, experienced talent, but they did not consider Hürriyet as a place to work for a digitally experienced head, uh, workforce. I remember very well, we were needing uh, analyst, and I called the candidate, and the first sentence was shocking. He said, I'm not a journalist. Why Hürriyet is calling me for a job? So actually, we had to change the whole image. We had to keep the strong parts of our brand image, but we have to make it younger, more agile, and more dynamic. Our corporate culture as well was almost in line with the journalism business. It was not result-oriented, it was not agile, and we had to change lots of things in our corporate culture. Our business processes, they were all designed according to a journalism business. Even our working hours, as you all experience, you look at, you look at the news on your mobile devices from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. in the morning, and uh, at night time, after midnight, Actually, these were the moments where we had very few people working in our headquarters, and actually we were not entering any new news at those hours. We had to change all our processes. On the other hand, we were disconnected with the younger generation, which was HR's target audience. Younger generations are our target audience at the HR department. They, but they were not reading newspaper, 
they were not very much interested in Hürriyet. They were finding Hürriyet quite old, uh, quite old school as well. So we had to create that connection with the younger generation once again. And on top of it, our political environment. For an HR person, how political environment can be a challenge? I'm sure you're asking yourselves. It is our case, unfortunately. Uh, my newspaper is not a pro-government or pro-opposition newspaper. We are pro-press uh, freedom. We are pro-freedom of express. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, for instance, working at Hürriyet sounds a bit risky for many people. Just a month ago, just because we made the news that did not please the pro-government groups, our headquarters have been rallied by angry mobs twice, and all the windows were broken, etc. And the next day, the day before, I had made an offer to a CTO after nine months of negotiations. And you know what that CTO did? He called the next day and he said, I'm sorry, my wife doesn't want me to work at Uriet. It's risky. So, as if this digital transformation was not easy enough, we also have that kind of things that I personally never experienced before in the previous industries I worked for. So, we had to do something. And of course, at HR, we have done lots of things. First of all, I had to rebuild the HR team. Yes, I have experience, more than 20 years of experience, especially in change management, in reorganization, in business process redesign, but I know nothing of digital world. I have no digital network. I don't know where to find a digitally uh, qualified workforce. So I had to bring in a totally new team who were very young, who are with me today. Actually, they are the ones who convinced me to come to LinkedIn and to do this presentation today. But they actually helped me to create the vision because I did not have that vision. All the things that I learned was, I mean, I'm not really exaggerating, were useless. I mean, yes, 20 years of experience, and I had to learn everything once again. This was with the team possible. On the other hand, HR that we are doing today is based on data, so we have to create that data. So we have a new department under HR, which, are, which is HR analytics and big data. So these are the things that we have done internally. But our brand management, I told you that we had lots of difficulties there. So we have created different ways to differentiate our brand. First of all, we are working in a great campus. There are lots of positive aspects of working at Hurriet. We have flexible working hours. We have no uh, dress code, etc. So these are the things that attract the youngsters. So we made small, very short videos that went viral in the social media. So we have focused on Facebook for a target audience between 12, uh, 18 to 12. And we have focused on LinkedIn for a target audience that is from 30 to 45 in order to attract the right people by conveying them the right brand image. Actually, we had uh, hackathons, for instance, to attract the best software developers. On the other hand, we have another problem, which is that we cannot find the right talent in Turkey because those functions like data scientist, uh, like trend and traffic editor, like digital uh, product manager, they exist in Turkey, but not in depth that we need. So what we had to do, we had to f reach those people and our business, journalism, content is very much culture related. We had to reach people who could understand Turkish, who were Turk actually. Where were they? They were in Palo Alto. So thanks to the help of LinkedIn actually, we spotted every single Turkish people working in Palo Alto as data scientists, project, uh, product managers, trend and traffic editors. And we went there. We organized lunches, dinners, breakfast. But of course, if we were only there with, as HR department, that wouldn't work. So we took our chairwoman with us, who had a very appealing name. So we contacted those people. So they started to have a different idea about Hürriyet, but they also uh, started to think of us as a more digital company. And we have used alternative recruitment strategies. We created videos. We created uh, native ads, etc., to uh, change the whole 
uh, concept of working at HR. So I have a very short video of uh, three and a half minutes where you are going to be s watching clips from all these activities that I have just very quickly uh, summarized. İnci Güvenç benim ismim. Organizasyonel Gelişim Müdürü. Az sonra Ceren Özdemir burada olacak. Kendisi organizasyonel gelişim uzmanı olarak aramıza katıldı ve bugün onun ilk iş günü. kaynakları ekibimize organizasyonel gelişim uzmanı arıyoruz. Organizasyonel gelişim uzmanı ne mi yapar? Gözde. Başlayalım ne kadar oldu? 9 ay oldu. Nasıl geçti? Güzel geçti, yoğun geçti. Ne yaptın? <gülüyor> ee, ağırlıklı olarak işe aldım. Çünkü çok fazla yeni pozisyonumuz var. Ne tür pozisyonlar alıyorsunuz? Ee, pozisyonlarımız aslında ağırlıklı olarak bilgi teknolojileri. Çünkü biz dijital tarayışan bir şirketiz. Ne olmazsa kesinlikle uyuşamazsınız. Yani sayısal zekasının kesinlikle olması lazım ama sadece yeterli olacak bir şey değil. Sayısal zeka? Uyumlu olması lazım. Uyumlu. Hürriyet Dijital'e yazılım uzmanı arıyoruz. Didaktik insanlar ve yani renksiz siyah beyaz insan istemiyoruz biz. Renkli istiyoruz. Biz gökkuşağı gibi insan olsun istiyoruz. Şu an için değişimi ifade ediyor aslında. Ekran makyaj yapmadım artık post yapan arkadaş güzel bir 10 yaş falan atar. Tabii güzel yanları yanında bir de her meslekte olduğu gibi zor yanları da var. Bu nedir? Sürekli kafayı çalıştırıyorsunuz. İşlemciyi çok ısıtıyorsunuz bir kere. <gülüyor> Hürriyet dünyası kendine kolay bağlayan ama zor vazgeçilen bir yer. Mesela 9.30'da da işe başlayabiliyorsunuz. Tabii yani böyle imkanlar olduğu zaman insanda hakikaten böyle çalışma isteği oluyor. Yani insana bir de gurur da veriyor. Yani Hürriyet çatısı altında olmak da ayrı bir gurur veriyor insana. Yani benim için Hürriyet mesleki anlamda saygı ve özgürlüğü ifade ediyor. Ben de Şecit Didolek, Hürriyet Bilgi Teknolojisi grubunda e, Şubat 2015 itibariyle iş analisti ve proje yöneticisi olarak çalışıyorum. Merhaba ben Kıvılcım Kökbil. Hürriyet'te kullanıcı deneyimi ve arayüz tasarımcısıyım. İnsan kaynaklarında belki 5 sene önce, 10 sene önce hiç konuşmayacağımız bir konuyu konuşuyor olacağız. O da sosyal medyada, daha doğrusu dijital dünyadaki izlerimizin işe alımlarda nasıl bir etki yarattığı konusu. Bugün İş yerinde aşk konusunu konuşuyor olacağız birlikte. İş yerinde aşk olur mu? Nasıl karşılanır? Performansına nasıl bir etki yaratır? Nasıl algılanırsınız? Yöneticileriniz buna kızar mı? Bir sürü soru var aslında. Zam nasıl istenir? Çalışanların en büyük sorunsalı. Gün içinde 25-30 dakikada bir ki ben normalde zamanlayıcı konuları bunun için. E, kalkıp bir tane boş su kalıp yapıp geri oturursanız hem kalp kriz riski azalır hem de gün içi giy ayakkabınız hızlanacaktır. Sonra gene oturup hiçbir şey olmuş gibi devam ediyoruz. Well, as you have seen, we have really done many things. We worked with the Instagram phenomenon, and for instance, that guy who was doing the squats was a phenomenon. I didn't know him actually. When my colleagues came with me the idea, I said, "Oh, it's absurd. Why should we do that?" But actually, that was the video series that attracted the highest. Uh, likes and followers. So the outcomes, as you can see from the LinkedIn uh, data as well, really, really improved our performance in every area. But in a different way, let me put it, when I joined in 2012, our company was 2,200 people. And I was the youngest at the executive committee. Today, after three and a half years, uh, I'm the oldest in the executive committee. Everybody else is new, even the CEO is younger than me. And actually our company is 1,550 people because we made the processes leaner, etc. 
but most importantly, out of those 1,550 people, 600 of them are new employees that have been recruited in the last three and a half years. So it has been really a hectic journey. Of course, we have done good things. Yes, Hurriyet today is considered as a tech company, and we are invited to many uh, digital conferences in the content world, etc. and digital workforce is eager to join Hurriyet, but retention is still one of our most important problems because this new f workforce is, it can, can really escape from your hands any moment in case they are not happy. So we're trying to solve that problem, and there is a huge internal culture gap, as you have seen from the Squat movie as well, because we have very old people working with very young people, they don't, they don't really get along, so we still have a lot of things to do. So, as I have mentioned, we have to unlearn the learned as HR people. This is my, what my personal experience showed me. And we have to shift our minds to, the, to that of the, our, our target audience. I have to confess that many of the things that we have done during these three and a half years, some of them I would not have dared doing or I would not even bother doing it, but it was my team who forced me to that. They are much younger than I am and they have lots of better ideas than I do. And a story, because a story makes the difference. When we were attracting the new talent, we were actually attracting them for the future that did not exist. So we had to back it up with a story and that storytelling, I believe, just made a difference. So it was our story and it was a great pleasure to share it with you. And right now, my colleague Narisha will be taking the floor and she will be uh, sharing with you her story. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Jiva. Hi, everybody. I'm Narisha Singh. Um, I'm the global head of resourcing for a bank in South Africa called Standard Bank. We have been in existence for 153 years, and actually this month marks a milestone for us. We turn 153 years, and I think that's quite remarkable. We um, are represented across the continent on 23 country, in uh, 23 continents, um, and that's the, the size and capacity and scale in terms of our diversity and how we spread across. I'm here today to talk to you about how pivotal it is in terms of banking and this new world. And we've started to hear these themes come across from this morning around the new digital world, innovation, and how we need to think differently and we need to think outside the box. So we're going to start off with a video, and this is going to set the scene in terms of where we're going and why we had to make this change and why it was pivotal for us to relook at our recruitment strategy and most importantly, partner with our marketing colleagues. I'm not a banker, or an economist, or any kind of expert. Well, maybe I am. I'm a customer. In my life, the word bank is a verb, and not a noun. Like be, wake, walk, play, write, trade, craft, run, do, discover, bank. It's a doing word an action that is part of my life, so it should be a part of it and not a part from it. It's not somewhere I go anymore, but something I do. And just like this is not a phone, but an extension of me, my life, my lifestyle, where and who I am. So this is not a bank, but this is. And these are here, here, and even here. When I say I'm ready for a digital revolution, I'm not talking about a move from this to this. I'm talking about a complete ideological shift. Otherwise, the big banks will become this. The world is evolving fast, and the tech even faster. It's time for my bank to be the change that is in the world, to catch up. Imagine a digital bank that understood that, that combined and engaged all the information about me that is already out there and used it. Imagine how much better I would be understood as a customer. Just think of how this digital bank could walk with me. Always on, always ready, always with me. This is the world of digital banking, and it really is simpler, better, faster. Join us on the journey to becoming a DigiBank. So as I said, this sets the scene around why we had to make the change. 
Um, gone are the days where we can use our traditional recruitment methods to attract our candidates. Our consumer behavior is changing. Our banking in terms of how we're doing banking and how we're interacting with our consumers are changing. And it's the same with our candidates. Gone are the days where we researched our candidates. Our candidates are now researching us before they come into interviews. So we had to do something fundamentally different. We had to look at our, our, relook at our recruitment strategies. But you know, to Tuba's point, it's this new world of understanding what's going on, this new digital world, and how do we actually embrace it? Um, and it was all new to us. We're recruitment experts, so we understand key fundamental sourcing strategies around how we go and, and how we attract these candidates. But there were new buzzwords around. So it was digital, it was content marketing, um, and, and these are things that we actually needed to understand. And we had to make peace that you know this is a new world that we're playing in, and we had to collaborate and understand it from our marketing partners, because they were the experts in the space. So began the relationship between um, marketing and, and recruitment. So let me not lie to you, it wasn't an easy journey. Um, so I did schedule my meeting with marketing and I pitched up and they looked at this HR person going, oh, what are you doing here? You know, wh why is HR playing in our space? What are you gonna tell us? You know, how are you gonna help us? So for those of you that don't know me, um, it was easy enough for me to go, right, this is a quick sell. The consumer and the employer brand needs to come together. Let's do it. Unfortunately, it was a hard lesson for me to learn, and I had to eat a little bit of humble pie. It wasn't as easy as that, because I needed to understand their world. I thought that explaining my world to them and, and letting them understand where we needed to go and what we needed to do was as easy as that. But I needed to understand things like brand perception and what that means and what the reputational risk is for us from an external perspective. So on a very practical level, it's not as easy as taking something from an internal perspective and putting it out into the external market because that could that could uh, damage our brand so it was a learning and it was a partnership of, in terms of coming together just like any other relationship so what what next and why did we do this so now that the, the the honeymoon as I'd like to call it the honeymoon phase was over what was one of the first things that we wanted to tackle the one thing that really bugged me was we had invested a lot of money in an applicant tracking system. And on the front, on the front end of that, in terms of what candidates were seen, there wasn't a differentiator against our competitors. There wasn't a compelling st a story. It wasn't telling the external market who we were, what we were doing, what, where we were going. And most importantly, from a candidate perspective, it wasn't creating the best candidate experience. It was very disjointed, and candidates couldn't find information. So this is the, the key project that I partnered with marketing in terms of helping them understand what we wanted to achieve to the external market from a creative design and how we would bring our expertise from a recruitment perspective to that. So this was one of the first projects that we worked on. Um, and this is what we came up with. So what you're actually seeing from based on what I said to you and where we were around our old website and, and in the external market, what you're seeing is new visual design, you're seeing modern infographics, you're seeing um, our joint CEOs which are telling our stories around who we are, where we're going, what is our strategy, we're truly a global organization, and it's real authenticity because if you have real people in your organization telling that story, it's a lot more believable. One of the key things that we did when we built this website is a lot of our stats were telling us that users that were accessing our website were accessing it via a Mobi device. So this had to be, in a, be built in a Mobi-friendly version, and that's one of the key things that we've done. And the stats in terms of, and I'll talk about it a little bit just now around data, that's shown us phenomenal results in terms of building it in a Mobi-friendly version. So let's talk about data, and this goes into the theme that's been running from this morning around data and how critical and how important it is, because data helps you to tell the story. So on a monthly basis, I get a report from marketing, and this helps us to evaluate what, what's working, what's not working, and most importantly, what is the candidate behavior. 
So as much as our business is looking at big data and our consumers in terms of how our consumers are behaving, this is giving us intelligence in terms of how our candidates are behaving. So where are they falling off? What are they looking at? What are they not looking at? What do we need to improve? And I'm doing this in partnership with my marketing partners because the data is helping us to put that story together. And most importantly, it's helping us to build the credibility with our business. And second to that, it's helping us tell our stories to our our recruiters because what is this telling them what kind of story is this telling them from a channel optimization perspective where your candidates coming from and what type of candidates are we attracting via the website this piece talks to and I alluded to it earlier on around our consumer brand and our employer brand for me the big dream would be to see our employer brand and our consumer brand meeting together so if you look at, and again, Tuba touched on it earlier around this new workforce that we're dealing with, millennials do not trust brand advertising. They do not trust brand perception. But if you look at our more older generation, they do trust it. So what is the story telling us? The story is telling us that whatever marketing tactics we're using to attract our consumers, we need to use those same tactics to attract candidates. So we needed to relook at our digital strategy, our social media strategy, and how this comes to together and how we optimize off those strategies in terms of how we are attracting our consumers. So if you look at our candidate strategy that we've now just put together, it, it more looks like a marketing activation plan. And I say that with a little bit of a smirk on my face because we like that. We actually want to shift the boundaries and we want to do things differently. We don't want it to be the same boring old recruitment strategy that we had two years ago. We want to shape and we want to shift things. And this is what's going to help us to do that. Brand with any relationship comes trust, and it's the same with the brand. You have to trust the brand, and this is something that our recruiters know well back in South Africa. So when they interact with candidates on an online channel, they actually build that relationship with candidates, but it's, it's bringing authenticity into it, and it's actually allowing them to use tools that they use on a daily basis, like LinkedIn. This is something that they're using on a daily basis, but incorporating innovative channels into that, which is now starting to look like experiential marketing. And again, this is a space where we want to play in, but we want to play in that space with our marketing partners. So what does this future look like with marketing? I can stand here and I can give you three takeaways around that. The first is there's going to be great successes and you need to share in those successes together because it's not about standing here and going, I've achieved this by myself. I've not achieved this by myself. I've achieved it with my colleagues in marketing. There's also going to be bad times. There's going to be the times where things actually don't work, but it's about taking the learnings out of that and not pointing fingers and blaming. The second for me is very important, is that you need to be seen as true partners. You can't say, I'm in recruitment and you're in, you're in marketing. We need to be seen as true partners and collaborate on our efforts. And I don't need to tell you, Tuba mentioned this earlier on as well, the digital world changes overnight. You could see something today, you could wake up tomorrow morning and it looks completely different. But we need to be on the forefront of that and we need to be on the forefront with our marketing partners. So those are the three key things that I would say to you that you need to build with your marketing partners. The, you know, there's, there's lots of things that we need to start building from a recruitment perspective. There's, there's other projects that I've worked on, but unfortunately from a time perspective, it doesn't allow me to share that with you, but please reach out to me um, either today or tomorrow and I can share with you what, what some of those projects have been and most importantly, what are some of those learnings have been. So I'm now gonna leave you and end you with, uh, leave the session with the video, which encapsulates this relationship between HR and marketing and more importantly, how pivotal it is in terms of going into this new era of digital, into this new world of marketing, and into this new world of recruitment. Thank you very much. Really great candidate attraction strategies happen when marketing and HR work together really well. And I think as part of our candidate engagement strategies, it was important for marketing to see what the reason is for us to be in the external um, environment. You'll probably uh, know that marketing teams are very focused on the consumer out there, really looking at our client base and how we uh, service them with products and a great brand experience. Candidates are no different. 
So one of our big challenges was to help the marketing teams understand that our candidates and our customers are sometimes the same people. And the message and the brand positioning we provide to the external market actually has a dual function. It's been a great journey in Standard Bank. The partnership with marketing has really been productive. But it is a continuous education process to help people understand why HR would ever need external marketing services um, for, the, for our campaigns. For me, it's a case where um, if you don't have a strong employee brand and employee value proposition that gives the brand uh, a framework, then you don't attract the right candidates. And your culture is not the, the type of culture that people want to connect with. So for me, it's, it's, it's the employee brand doesn't sit on its own. It literally needs to be moved and given that drive by the employee value proposition. And without that, then candidates just, you know, look at you and you, you don't, you're not differentiated from your, your competitors. Some of the challenges that we experienced in marketing is that we had never been in this territory before. It was sort of uncharted. So it was the first time walking into a space where we had to partner very closely with human capital. And it was also a case that some of the channels I personally and my team didn't own. So we had to rely on a lot of, of our stakeholders in marketing to give us the platforms and share with us. So it was, it was a collaborative effort. And um, some of the, the challenges we also experienced is that the external career site, for instance, didn't give uh, candidates the right candidate experience. So they, they, they got onto our, our portals and they were just disengaged because it wasn't a great user experience and the user journey wasn't great. So we, we, we looked at those challenges and tried to find a way that we can positively enhance them into stream. The future is working, working with marketing like a seamless process that we're not seen as two different entities. That when we go out into the external market and we put out a brand, whether it's a consumer brand or an employer brand, candidates see us, whether it's from a consumer perspective or whether it's from an employer pers perspective. Candidates see the brand not only from an employer perspective but also from a consumer perspective. That there's an underlying, when, when, when I talk about the differentiator, um, which I did earlier in the, in the conversation, when candidates see that brand out there, they see key differentiators, whether they want to come and work for us because it's a really appealing brand, or whether, or whether they see us as one of, the, one of the banks in South Africa that's really evolved from a digital perspective, or really evolved from a product perspective, there's something that attracts us, or, or attracts us to them, and attracts candidates to stand a bank. Um, so marketing and, and resourcing need to be seen as one collaborative brand in the external market. And for me, that, that's, a big, that's a big big picture ask for me, because we're not going out as two separate bands, and we're not trying to achieve different things. We're trying to achieve the same thing at the end of the day. This, I think, for me, would be the thing that stands out, in that the relationship between marketing and, and HR, as Standard Bank calls it HC, you know, has grown from strength to strength. I have watched them fumble. I have watched them try to figure out things, not know exactly what is going on, and then finally realizing their goals. And this is the is the you know the self esteem, the the confidence in which they push forward. Whether it's Narisha, whether it's Solo, for me it's very much around we are going to persevere and we're going to get this right, no matter the challenges, no matter the obstacles.